The main steps for installing the baseplate on its concrete platform are 1. Making sure you have everything you need before starting the installation process. 2. Setting the baseplate on the concrete platform. 3. Installing the grout forms. 4. Mixing the grout. 5. Pouring the grout. And 6. Checking for voids under the baseplate. The main things that will be needed for the installation process of the baseplate over the concrete platform are the grout, all the necessary equipment, and the personnel required to get the job done within the required time frame. Grout is an engineered material that is mixed at the job site and then either poured or injected into the void below the baseplate in order to bond the baseplate to its concrete platform. It is a mixture of solid aggregate in a fluid base material that will cure and harden within a specific time frame. Grout curing is a chemical process through which the grout gradually transforms from liquid form to solid form. The rate at which grout cures increases with temperature. For pump installations there are two main requirements for the grout. The first is that the grout should possess the minimum required strength that is recommended by the pump manufacturer. The second is that the grout should exhibit a low amount of shrinkage. This ensures that excessive distortion of the baseplate due to the shrinking of the grout, doesn't occur. Grouts are of two basic types. Epoxy-based grout and cement-based grout. Epoxy-based grout consists of a resin, hardener and an aggregate material. The advantages of epoxy grout include 1. High chemical and electrical resistance. 2. Pre-measured components of the grout ensure consistency. 3. Rapid cure time. 4. Easier surface preparation, since the surface should not be saturated with water prior to the application of the grout. The disadvantages of epoxy grout include 1. High cost as compared to cement-based grout. Epoxy grout can be 4 to 10 times more expensive than cement grout. 2. The curing process is exothermic and generates a significant amount of heat. The rise in the temperature of the baseplate, which can be as much as 35 degrees Celsius, can make the grouting process more difficult. 3. Epoxy grout is flammable corrosive, and toxic. The grout should not be exposed to extreme heat, or flame, or sparks while it is being prepared, poured, or during the curing process. The epoxy grout should also be mixed in a well-ventilated area. Furthermore, the required personal protection equipment or PPEs, must be worn by all personnel working with the epoxy grout. The PPEs include eye protection, gloves, face protection, protective clothing and in case ventilation is not adequate, breathing equipment. 4. Epoxy grout has a limited shelf life and hence the date of manufacture and the recommended shelf life should be noted before use. Cement-based grout consists of cement, plus a metallic or natural aggregate. Advantages of cement-based grout include 1. It is easily mixed at the job site. 2. Viscosity is easily controlled by varying the amount of water added to the mix. 3. It is much lower in cost than epoxy-based grout. The disadvantages of cement-based grout are 1. Curing can take a significantly longer time than epoxy-based grout. 2. It is less resistant to chemicals than epoxy grout. 3. The surface of the foundation must be saturated with water for at least 24 hours prior to grouting further increasing the installation and cure time of cement-based grouts. The equipment needed to perform the mixing and pouring of the grout includes 1. The forms that will be used to govern the flow of the grout. The forms must have adequate strength. Areas that will come in contact with the grout should be coated with a paste wax in order not to adhere to the grout. 2. A grout mixer should be used to speed up and facilitate the mixing process. If a grout mixer is not available, a high torque drill with a mixer blade attached to it can be used. If the drill starts to overheat, it can be cycled with one or two more drills until it cools down. 3. 
metal or plastic mixing buckets. 4. Since the mixing buckets will be too heavy to lift when filled with grout, smaller metal or plastic buckets should be used to pour the grout in place. 5. Ventilation fans should be set up to improve air circulation and lower the temperature of the grout. This is especially important for epoxy grout since it is toxic and tends to heat up as it cures. 6. Duct sealant should be available to plug any holes or cracks in the forms as the grout is poured. 7. Personal protective equipment should be used. These include Face shields Goggles Gloves Protective clothing And breathing masks Before starting the pour, make sure enough personnel are available to complete the pour before the first poured grout begins to cure. This will ensure that the grout cures evenly, and that it does not crack as it cures. This will also minimize the uneven forces exerted by the grout on the base plate as the grout cures, hence minimizing base plate distortion. The curing time should be obtained from the grout manufacturer and the personnel required to finish the pour within that time frame should be trained in their respective tasks before the pour begins. For epoxy grout, the cure time is usually between 1 and 2 hours, depending on the ambient temperature. Once the surface of the platform and the underside of the base plate have been properly prepared, the next item in the pump installation process is to set the base plate up on top of its concrete platform. First, set the base plate on the foundation. The base plate should be raised above the surface of the platform by a few inches to allow the grout to flow under the base plate. This can be done using jack screws or forms. Next check to see if the base plate is level. If the base plate is not leveled, shim the low side until the slope is corrected. Continue to shim under the base plate until it is level in all planes. Once the base plate is leveled, tighten all mounting bolts and nuts, finger tight. The flatness, level, and orientation of the foot pads should then be checked. If the foot pads are not within the limits for flatness, level or orientation that are set by the manufacturer, they should be remachined to the correct specifications. Take another set of readings to ensure that the base plate is level. If necessary, loosen bolts and nuts, reshim, retighten bolts and nuts finger tight and take another set of readings. Continue until the base plate is level in all planes with mounting bolts and nuts finger tight. The exposed threads of the anchor bolts should then be protected from the grout adhering to them by covering them using a cut hose or duct tape. Inspect the shimmed and leveled base plate for areas where grout could flow out, either underneath the edge of the base plate near shims, or through side holes in the base plate. Forms must be constructed to surround the base plate to hold in the grout. Forms are usually constructed of wood or plastic. If an epoxy grout is used, the wood must be either treated with a release agent or covered with plastic or wax to prevent the epoxy grout from adhering to the wood and making removal difficult. The forms must be liquid tight since epoxy grout can flow even through very small cracks. A duct sealant compound can be used to seal all openings and cracks. The sealant compound must be kept on hand during the pour in order to quickly seal any cracks that might develop during the pour. Follow the manufacturer's directions when mixing and pouring the grout. For an epoxy grout, the resin and hardener are typically first mixed thoroughly, and then the aggregate is added. On the other hand, cement grout typically mixes all elements at the same time. For epoxy grout, the foundation's concrete platform must be dry before and during the pour. Hence if the pump installation will take place outdoors. The weather should be checked to make sure it does not rain during the pouring process. A canopy can also be built over the foundation to protect it from rain. For cement grout, on the other hand, the foundation must be saturated with water for at least 24 hours prior to the pour. For both epoxy and cement grout, the temperature of the base plate should be between 40 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, or 5 and 32 degrees Celsius, during the pour. In hot weather, a canopy can be used to deflect the sunlight and the pour can be done in the afternoon, in order to stay within the recommended temperature range. 
In cold weather, convection type space heaters can be used. Do not use radiant heat, open steam, or open flame to heat the base plate. A temporary shelter can also be built around the area of the base plate to trap the heat. The top surface of the base plate should be covered with a thick polyethylene sheet to prevent the grout from sticking to the top of the base plate. For solid or pre-grouted base plates, pour the grout around and under the base plate. It is preferred to use a head box to force the grout in place. A plunger, which is a tool that is shaped like a capital T, can be used to apply pressure to the grout, in addition to the static head, due to the higher elevation of the grout within the head box. Continue adding grout until the top surface of the grout is about 1 to 2 and a half centimeters above the bottom surface of the base plate. For hollow base plates, pour the grout into the base plate through the grouting holes. If the base plate is very thick, consult the grout manufacturer's instructions for the thickness that can be poured. Some epoxy grouts cannot properly cure if they are poured too thick, and may need to be poured in stages for thicker base plates. Ensure that all areas of the base plate are being filled. Once the base plate has been filled, Continue to pour grout until the top level of grout is flush with the top of the base plate. For both hollow and solid base plates, as the grout is poured, monitor the forms for leakage. Plug any small cracks or holes, using the duct sealant compound. Plug larger holes by nailing extra wooden forms on top of the holes. Carve or chisel out any grout that flows out of any cracks, or out of the base plate's vent holes. After the pour is complete and the grout has cured, check for any voids under the base plate, between the base plate and the top of the grout. This can be done by tapping the top surface of the base plate using a metal hammer or rod. If a hollow sound is perceived in a certain area, two holes should be drilled through the top of the base plate at either ends of the void, with one hole used for filling the void, and the other hole used as an air vent. The void should be filled through one of the holes using grout without aggregate. After the grout has cured, remove the side forms, and any forms or shims that were placed under the base plate. Then lower the jack screws so that the weight of the base plate is fully supported by the grout. Next, tighten the nuts of the anchor bolts according to the torque requirements of the base plate's manufacturer. Use a torque wrench to prevent over-tightening. Due to the forces generated by the grout as it cures, the base plate's foot pads may have moved. Hence the foot pads must be rechecked for flatness, level and alignment. 